Why is our agricultural prices going up and down? Because I have black money. I'm a wholesaler. I come to the, uh, to the wholesale market, tell the farmer who has come to sell. He can't go back. He has to dump everything and go. So I tell him, give me at the lowest possible price, here's the cash. Farmer only takes cash. And so he takes the cash, he gives it, whether it's fruits or whether it's vegetables or rice or wheat. And then this buyer puts it in cold storage. An artificial shortage is created, prices shoot up, then you sell tomatoes, all these. This is why the prices go up and down. And today we have given permission which no other country has given in the world, again due to the previous finance minister, that industrialists, industrial corporations can do forward trading in agriculture. And they come with all the black money, dump it, and then the prices go up. So all this money, then what do you do with that money? Well, you keep it in, in boxes in your country, in your own house, or in safe houses, or you send it out. So you send it out how? Hawala people. Where do the Hawala people take the money? They don't take any money. You give them a container of rupees, they will leave it here. But they will travel to Dubai. There they will phone up their agent in Switzerland and saying, I have got X crores of rupees with me now at the exchange rate of 70 rupees to a dollar. Please deposit in this Swiss bank account or a Cayman Island account or Virgin Island account in this numbered account. So he gives the name of the, the number of the account. And it's all done by internet. So they deposit in the account dollars. And then when somebody from that foreign country wants to come to India and doesn't want exchange rate of 68 but wants an exchange rate of 70, the same Hawala chap says, okay, I've got a container, I'll give it out of that. And you pay me 70 rupees per dollar. So this is the way it is being done. Now, you can't do a transaction of this kind in Dubai unless you inform Dawood Ibrahim and unless you inform the ISI of Pakistan. That means, <clears throat> that means Pakistan knows who is depositing how much money in which bank account because the, the Hawala man to survive has to tell that to the Pakistanis in Dubai. Look at the control they get over our society. Why is it that people in our country in high places all the time pleading for normalcy with Pakistan, particularly cinema stars? Because they know Pakistan can publish one item in the newspaper and they'll be finished in this country. Now, if you put money in Switzerland banks, they don't give you interest. They may give you, charge you 2% service charge. So you have to pay them to keep the money. And then what does Switzerland do? Take that money of your bank and go and deposit it and invest it in the bond market in America and get 4%. So 2% from you, 4% from a 100% safe bond market in America. Switzerland earns 6% on your money with no work done at all. That's why Switzerland people are very happy nowadays, particularly with the Indians. Moreover, some politicians said, what is this Swiss banks charging us 2%? We should be able to earn something with our black money deposit in, in foreign countries. So again, the previous government came up with a new scheme called participatory note. I ask all kinds of finance students, have you heard of participatory note? Most of them say no, never heard of it. 99% people of India have not heard of it. If you go anywhere else in the world, they have never heard of it because it doesn't exist in their country. Only country in the world participatory note exists is India. And what is this participatory note? 
I have a bank account in Switzerland. I withdraw $1 million in cash, put it in a suitcase, take it to Morgan Stanley, U.S. Fidelity Investment, or Goldman Sachs, in any office in Europe. Show my Indian passport. Why Indian passport? Because only India honors participatory notes. No other country in the world has it. So show Indian passport. Any terrorist can show an Indian passport. You can get it for 500 rupees in Chowni Chowk in Delhi. That's not a problem. So terrorists also use this route. So they will give you, take the cash and give you a receipt, which is a participatory note, no name in it, no serial number in it, no date in it, just the amount. And with that, you come to that piece of paper, you come to India, make a photostat copy and give it to Reserve Bank, they will give you a chit. Because in India, participatory note is legal. And that chit says that receive such and such a, a participatory note of this thing. Then you go with this to a stockbroker and say, I want to buy stocks. No questions asked. If you go, then they will ask, uh, SEBI will send you a questionnaire. Where do you get this money? Which bank account? Where do you take it out? But by an amendment passed by the previous government, this will never be asked of participatory notes. So the participatory note is used to buy stocks. The stocks go up because your, your demand for that stock has gone up. And at a peak, you sell it. And he'll give you rupees. You take those rupees and uh, pay 30% capital gains tax, and the Reserve Bank will give you dollars. Now it is white dollars, not black dollars. And you go back. This has been going on. The largest contribution to our foreign investment today is participatory note. And the second largest is investment by Mauritius. America is fifth in the rank today. Ask the Reserve Bank for foreign investment data. Find America's fifth. First is participatory note. Second is Mauritius. Why Mauritius? Because again, the previous government thought up a new brilliant idea. And the new brilliant idea was this. That why should we pay 30% capital gains tax? So if you, if Mauritius in people, Mauritius companies invest in India, in the stock market, then poor Mauritius, they're all overseas Indians, they were originally Bihari laborers whom the British took. So no capital gains tax on Mauritius companies. So what you do is you come after getting the participatory note, put one dollar in Mauritius, they'll register a company for you. And on that basis of that company, you invest and you make your profit and don't pay any capital gains tax because you have invested through the Mauritius company. That is why when the 2G, I was prosecuting it in the Supreme Court, I found all the beneficiaries, all of them, all those who got the licenses have address in Mauritius. Then I said, my God, why? Then I found they were on the same street, their offices on the same street. They were in the same building. They were on the same floor. In fact, they had the same room number, all of them. So I had somebody visit that room number, and he says there's a lock and key and there's no furniture inside. So it is a sham, the use of Mauritius. And this is how our foreign, people cry about foreign investment, our foreign investment has risen. Please see the breakdown. Is it more participatory notes? Is it more Mauritius? And now Singapore is also joining that. So. This is how the Indian economy has been distorted. The black money has taken over your economy.